Welcome to video number six. Today we're going to talk about Thevenin's theorem. Basically, Thevenin's theorem says that any arbitrarily complicated and huge linear circuit can be represented by an equivalent voltage source with a series resistance. In this case, we have a black box that contains a linear circuit, and we're looking at a port which is any two nodes in the circuit, okay? So these wires are connected somewhere inside here to two different nodes, and we could have more than one port, and they all may have different Thevenin equivalents, but for right now, we're just looking at a circuit with one port. This is the equivalent Thevenin resistance and the Thevenin voltage. The open circuit voltage here, V sub AB, is the Thevenin voltage for the circuit. The Thevenin resistance can be de determined a couple of different ways, and that's what we'll look at briefly right now. All right, there are three ways to do this. Method number one, if the linear circuit contains only independent sources, the kind that we've used so far in all the preceding videos, we deactivate those sources and just pretend that we're connecting an ohm meter to the port and determine the equivalent resistance using all of our normal circuit reduction techniques. This is usually the easiest method to apply, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Method number two. We can leave all of the sources active in the network and connect a short circuit across our port and determine the resulting short circuit current. The Thevenin resistance is the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. Method number three. We can deactivate all of the independent sources in our circuit and apply a test source. The test source could be a voltage or a current. And then we apply Ohm's law and calculate RTH by dividing the test voltage by the resulting test current or the test current by the resulting test voltage. This technique is used often when we have mixtures of dependent and independent sources in one circuit. Again, it's a little bit more advanced. We're not going to do that here today. We'll save that for some future video. Here is the circuit of interest for our analysis today. It contains two voltage sources and a current source. We're going to determine the values of VTH and RTH for the Thevenin equivalent. We're going to start by determining the Thevenin resistance. To do that, we're going to deactivate all of the sources. Remember, when we deactivate a voltage source, we replace it with a short circuit. When we deactivate a current source, we replace it with an open circuit. So we're going to short this side, short this side, and open this thing. This is the equivalent circuit we get when we deactivate all of the sources. Okay, now, when we look into this thing from the perspective of this port, we see that R1 and R3 are in parallel. So I've redrawn it here to make that easier to see. And then we combine these two into a parallel equivalent. 4K in parallel with 2K is 1.33K. Here's our resulting circuit. And if we were to connect an ohm meter across that, we'd read 2.33K ohms. That is our Thevenin resistance. So we've deactivated the sources, redrawn the circuit, simplified it, determined its resistance. Pretty straightforward. All right. Now, for determination of the Thevenin voltage, we're going to apply the superposition theorem. That is, we're going to analyze this circuit three times. Once with V1 active, I1 and V2 deactivated. Once with I1 active, V1 and V2 deactivated. And once with V2 active, I1 deactivated and V1 deactivated. Let's start by deactivating I1 and V2. 
When we deactivate those sources, this is the equivalent circuit we get. We have 10 volts applied to this network. R2 has no effect on the output voltage. I'm calling in that V prime TH, the first component of the Thevenin voltage. This has no effect because there's no current flow through it. So we've just got a voltage divider with R1 and R3. Applying the voltage divider equation, we come up with V prime sub TH equals 3.33 volts. So with 10 volts applied here, we've got 3.33 dropped across R3. That is our first Thevenin component. Next, we're going to deactivate V1 and V2, leaving the current source active. That gives us this equivalent circuit. Now, we can view R1 and R3 as being in parallel with each other, so I redrew the circuit over here with that shown. We've got 4K in parallel with 2K, which is, again, 1.33K ohms. R2 has no effect on the output voltage, which I'm calling V prime prime sub TH. And the current source driving the equivalent parallel resistance gives us 5 milliamps times 1.33K ohms, which is 6.67 volts. That is the second component of our Thevenin voltage. For the third step, we're going to deactivate V1 and I1, reactivate V2. Here's the equivalent circuit we get. Now, R1 and R3 are again in parallel with each other, so if I redraw the circuit to emphasize that, we see we have again 4K in parallel with 2K, which gives us 1.33K ohms, and we have a voltage source with no current flowing through the circuit because it's open, so with 4 volts here, we're going to get minus 4 volts as our third Thevenin component because this voltage sensing arrow is looking at the negative side of this source. No voltage dropped here, no voltage dropped here. We've got negative four volts for that component. Finally, to get our Thevenin equivalent, we've put the Thevenin resistance in that we calculated earlier, and the net Thevenin voltage is V prime TH plus V prime prime TH plus the triple prime V sub TH. And those values all add up to 6 volts. So there is our Thevenin equivalent looking into terminals A and B. We've got a Thevenin voltage of 6 volts and an equivalent resistance of 2.33 K ohms. Now, why would we want to go to all the trouble of determining a Thevenin equivalent? Well, if we were looking to determine what happens at this port with different values of resistance connected to it, every time we connected a different resistor, we'd have to go through this whole analysis again to figure out what voltage and current we'd get. It's much simpler to use the Thevenin equivalent to do this, and that's one of the reasons we like to use Thevenin's theorem. It can also be used as a circuit reduction technique when we're analyzing circuits that contain transistors and op amps and things like that. So we will look at those applications in later videos, but for right now, that's an application of Thevenin's theorem. And again, if there are any questions or uh, clarifications that you think I should uh, present. Just let me know in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video.